Welcome back to Car Guy Fridays. This week we're going to be looking at a 1999 Mazda Miata. Putting a 3.6 rear end in it. It's got a 3.9 now. Car originally came 4.3, but it was an open disc. Somebody stole it before I bought the car. So I put a 3.9 in it, but now I'm going 3.6. Putting a 3.6 in it? Yeah. Why are you putting a 3.6 in it? You have the 3.9. It's going to accelerate slower, right? Right. Slower acceleration, but because I have turbo, a small turbo, it'll be ideal, is what I'm hoping. So it'll be lower RPM with longer gears, which will be ideal for a boosted car. What kind of turbo do we have? Pop it's the hood, a, let's see it. 2554R, baby gear turbo. <laughs> Since the blow up at the gap, we've got it back together, rebuilt the engine, did a rod build, finally got it back on the road, and now it's on to the next mod, 3.6 rear end. I know that there's a lot of people out there who see the 3.6 and go, whoa, we didn't have that in the US. I need more gear. I'm tired of hitting red line at 30 miles an hour in my six speed with my turbo. What we're gonna do is we're gonna hop in Brett's car, go for a drive, we're gonna show you the RPMs you're at, kinda get some subjective feelings for you know the drone, the sound, and everything before. Then we'll go ahead and swap the diff, and then we'll go do the same thing and then show you exactly what happens afterwards. So you at home can really figure out, do I want the 3.6, is it worth the money? I don't know, we'll find out, stay tuned. So we're out driving in the Miata. Hopefully you guys can hear okay. We're just cruising around, gonna get some subjective feels. It feels like a Miata currently, big shocker right now. Figured we would show the exact RPM and exact speed. I'm using Mega Square Tuner Studio along with a GPS app for my phone. So we're gonna go drive around and we'll see what it's like at say 60 miles an hour, see what it's like at 30 and maybe do 80 on the expressway real quick. Cruising here at about 34, 35 miles an hour, something like that. Looks like the engine RPM is hovering down at 2,100. You can see 35 over here. So next up, we'll go hit 60, see what that's that like. Goes. So we're going 60 miles an hour now, top down. Hopefully you guys can hear okay. Here's our readings. We're at a little over 2,900 RPMs, hanging out about 58 miles an hour. So it looks like we're doing uh, about 3,900 RPMs and about 79, 80 miles an hour. So there you go. There's your stock 3.9. Every Miata has it. A lot of the 3.6s come from Europe. As you may know, there were no 3.6 OEM Miatas in North America. So just getting in, getting little bits that I can out. See, much cleaner. This thing was pretty grimy at first, but you know, pretty typical. I think it's got what? What's it say here? 86K, so. So how do you take a rear end out of a Miata? Uh, there's a few steps we need to do. So if you've not been under a Miata before, this thing here, which spans from the transmission all the way to the rear end, is called the power plant frame. That's gonna have to come out. At the very least from about, in this case, this car from here back needs to come off. See this brace? That is a brace Mazda added in, I think, 94 with the 1.8 cars. It really helps the rear end to be more stable. Either way, it also really 
hard, makes it hard to take the diff out. So it's coming out too. And the last thing you have to do is to uh, take these axles out. Look at all these bright orange zip ties. He thought he could get away with it and none <laughs> of us would see, but instead it's gonna be all over YouTube. Yep. That zip tie, bright orange. Hey, we got them, we Dude, use them. Dude's got a bright green one back here. Yeah. Bright orange. Somebody bought the multi-pack from Walmart. You can tell what's yeah. going on. You don't have power tools, it's just a wrench and a wrench on, on each side. No, you're doing that wrong. If you don't have power tools, get power tools. Yeah, like, there's that Do you too. see how easy this is? Uh, drive shaft's about to come out. Just kind of slips off. It's called a slip yoke. It slips. And then you get your favorite hammer. This is the one you just, you love it. Sometimes you let friends borrow it and you're just like, oh God, I hope they bring my hammer back. And I brought it back. Took the wheel off. Took the axle nut off with the big impact and now I'm taking the top off. Then we're gonna pry the axle out. But first, before you make a mess, drain the fluid. Good old stinky gear oil. We've got the diff up on the bench now. It's time for disassembly. So we've got all the bolts out and I've just separated the case. Easiest way to do that is flip it upside down and and it's separated. So now we'll take this over, get it out of the way. We're actually selling this to our supercharged friend. Check out our other video where we repaired his crank snout and did donuts in the mall parking lot. Today's episode is brought to you by Right Stuff. Right Stuff. When you wish you had Toyota Bond, but they don't carry it at O'Reilly's. Jokes aside, this stuff's pretty good. Works well, I prefer it over the store brands and the others. I don't know if it's really better or not, but it costs more and it makes me feel good for things that I don't want to lose. The gasket maker is still drying, but in the meantime, go ahead and throw it in the car. So long as I don't put any liquids on it, then it'll hold up just fine. Give it a couple hours, let that dry, and then we'll go ahead and pour stuff in and go for a ride. First time at the 3.6. This is our first drive. What's your first impression? So it felt like without getting into full boost, lost a little bit of zip, but that was to be expected with a longer gearing. But I like it because its overall drivability seems better. Like right now I'm at fifth, 55 at about three grand. It's not so peaky, not all over. Like right now it might be at four grand. and see if it feels slower. Ready? Yeah. That was about 80 top of second. So we're going 80 miles an hour. Looks like the RPMs are at about 3,800 RPMs or so. Now we're going 60 miles an hour. Looks like we're doing about 2,600 RPMs or so. That's about 90, and it's at like 4,500. But it's pretty, it's pretty nice. It's a lot longer, which naturally, that's what we expected. I can tell a big difference here, which is when he's in sixth gear, there's no acceleration on the highway at all. The big thing that I've noticed just driving the car around is it's just you don't have as much gear which is what we did but you do lose some of the, the just in that in that range but you gain some drivability 
I mean, this car is much easier to drive. Yeah. If you're putting along on the expressway, a lot of times you're not going to be in a place that builds a lot of boost. So you're back to like 100 horsepower trying to pass with, in six gear at 3,000 RPM or whatever. And using all the boost, whereas before I kind of had the motor, you know, four grand or whatever. You know, I, I may get into five pounds. Now I'm getting into 10 all the time to actually, you know, utilize all the power, which just wasn't the same as before. At this point, you're thinking, do I want this? Do I want a 3.6? Is it worth the money? Is it worth my time? What I'm going to say is it really depends on how much power you have and or how much power you plan to have. This is probably the minimum amount of turbo Miata power I would suggest to put a 3.6 in. If anything, the idea of turning the boost up 2 or 3 PSI to make up for it yeah. is really tempting. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, if you're less than, say, 220, 230 wheel horsepower, you probably wouldn't have fun in a 3.6. If you're up in the 300, 400 range, this feels like it would be absolutely perfect. Your car would probably be faster. So I hope this 3.6 install has been informational for you, been kind of entertaining as well. If you've enjoyed it, you want some more Miata content, hit that subscribe button. Go ahead and feel free to hit the like button. It'll help with the algo and finding more viewers who also like Miata content. And until next time, peace.